let's say you're asked to find the mean and all you're given is a frequency distribution like the one we're given here. Well, we can still find the mean or an approximation for the mean. And what we have to do though is we have to use a different formula. And the formula that we're going to use um, involves a couple things. It involves the frequencies, which is perfect because what we have is a frequency distribution. We're going to need the frequencies. Here are the, fre here are the frequencies right here. Your frequencies are in this column. And the frequencies in the formula are going to be called F. So that's why I have this F in parentheses here. Um, when I refer to F in the formula itself, I'll be referring to referring to the frequencies. The other thing that we need for the formula are the class midpoints. So let's find the class class midpoints. We've done this already for this uh, frequency distribution, actually, in a previous video. Class midpoints. And I, I actually mentioned how it is that we can quickly find all the midpoints. And the first thing we do is we, oh, by the way, in the formula, the class midpoints, the class midpoints are going to be referred to as the X's. So this is kind of odd. It's the only formula, I think, other than the standard deviation for a frequency distribution formula, where we use X to represent the midpoints of the classes. So the F from the formula is going to be this column, the frequencies. The X from the formula is going to be this column, the class midpoints. The first class midpoint is a result of averaging those class limits, taking 5, adding 8 to it, and dividing by 2. That's how we find the arithmetic mean, and the class midpoint is the arithmetic mean of the class limits. So that gives us 13 over 2 which is 6.5. So that's my first class midpoint. And I also mentioned in the previous video that once you have the first class midpoint, to find the other class midpoints, all you really have to do is find out what the class width is. In this case, the class width, the distance between consecutive lower class limits, is 4. So if I just keep adding 4 to this first class midpoint, I'll find all the other class midpoints. So the next one is going to be 10 0.5. I could have also found that by averaging 9 and 12. The next one is going to be 14.5. The next one is going to be 19.5, or sorry, 18.5. 18.5. Uh, the next one is going to be 22.5. 22.5. And the last class midpoint is going to be 26.5. All right, once we found all our class midpoints, um, the next thing is to apply the actual formula for the mean. So let's get that up here. Now, the formula for the mean from a frequency distribution is a bit different from that is a bit different than the formula for the mean when given raw data. When you're given a frequency distribution, it's going to go like this. The mean x bar is going to be equal to and it's going to equal the sum. Remember the sigma notation? Now we just have to figure out what the things are that we're adding up. Because we start off with a parenthesis directly to the right of the sigma, we're going to be adding up um, something after we've done an operation. Usually when you use parentheses, you're trying to group an operation, so you do it first. So the first thing we're going to do before we do the sum, before we add up, is we're going to take each frequency, which I'm going to denote f, remember this column, represents the column of our frequencies here, f. And I'm going to multiply those frequencies by x. And if you remember, we just mentioned that x were our class midpoint. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take all the frequency values and I'm going to multiply them by all the class midpoints. And then in the denominator, I'm going to divide this by the sum of all the frequencies. So basically, I'm going to multiply the column for the frequencies and the column for the class midpoints together. And then I'm going to add them all up and divide by the sum of the frequencies. All right. So I'm going to move over here. I'm going to make a new column where I'm going to put my products. That product is going to be the product of my midpoint and my uh, frequency. So 
let's see, this column here, I'm going to say is the column for F multiplied by X, which is just this column here, those values multiplied by all these values. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. The first one is going to be the 3 multiplied by the 6.5, and 3 times 6.5 is 19.5. So my first product of frequency and midpoint gives me 19.5. The next one is going to be 4 times 10.5. 4 times 10.5 will yield for us a value of 42. So the next product yields 42. Then we have 1 times 14.5. Well, 1 times 14.5 is just 14.5. And then we have 5 times 18.5. And 5 times 18.5 is 92.5. And then we have 1 times 22.5, which is 22. And then we also have 1 times 26.5, which is 26.5. So to get this new column, F times X, what I've done is I've gone through and I've multiplied all these frequencies over here, all these frequencies in this column, I've multiplied them by all the class midpoints over here. And actually, the sum of this new column is the numerator of my formula. So if I take all these, add them together, 19.5 plus 42 plus 14.5 plus 92.5 and plus 22.5 and then plus 26.5. If I add all those up, I get the numerator, which is the sum of the f times x, which gives me 217.5. So let's recap what I've done here. I found my class midpoints. Once I found my class midpoints, I took each of those class midpoints and multiplied them by the corresponding frequency for that class. That's how I came up with this column here that has my f times x's. And notice in the numerator of my formula for x bar, I have f times x in parentheses, meaning I should do that first. Once I've done that, the sum over here tells me that I should add all of those up. So next I added all of these up, and the sum of this column, the sum of all the numbers in this column, if you add up all the numbers in that column, you get 217.5. Now the denominator of this fraction, the denominator, well, the denominator looks familiar also. The denominator is the sum of the frequencies. If you take this column and add it up, the F, the column F, all the frequencies, add them up, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 1 is 14, plus the other one is 15. That was the size of our original data set. So the sum of the Fs is the same as N. We're dividing by the number of data values. So what we get is 217.5 divided by 15, which turns out to be 14.5. So x bar is 14.5 if you calculate x bar based on this frequency distribution. And there we have it. That is how we are going to calculate x bar, the mean, whenever we're giving a frequency distribution instead of raw data.